having interacted with the many entrepreneurs who are upcoming, they think it is capital. That's the problem. But uh, there is the element of the knowledge that uh, need, as you have rightly put it, that needs now to bridge the gap between them and the next level. What would you say about that? Okay, I would say it's yes and no when it comes to capital. Mm -hmm. In that if you're very low capital, you're also limited in how you can grow and how fast you can grow. And because the opportunity is not sitting there waiting for you, the opportunity gets grabbed by somebody else. So capital does play a part. However, I think the first step is starting the business, starting to grow the business. And when demand outstrips supply and you recognize that your cash flow cannot allow you to meet the demand because you're not making enough money. Because as you're making profit, you're, you're very profitable, you're doing very well, but the volumes that you're producing cannot meet the demand. That's the time now you need money that can be borrowed or from venture capitalists, whatever money you get. Because what you need to do is to put in more money, double your sales, triple your sales, quadruple your sales, and then now you get into positive cash flow and you're able to meet your market needs and expand your market. Now, in the absence of demand outstripping supply, saying that you need more money usually means that you're, 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 you've not yet put your systems and, in, and processes in place where you know for sure that this is a viable concept. The proof of concept is very critical. What are your financial ratios? What is your profitability? What, how, what percentage is being taken up by overheads, salaries, you know, trips, mm -hmm. lunches, dinners, all those things? Yeah. How much fat do you need to trim internally so that you can have a more positive cash flow? You'll find that a lot of businesses are very wasteful. Like now in this day and age, most businesses do not need physical infrastructure. They could quite happily uh, operate remotely. But how many decision, busy, sorry, how many business have actually made that decision? Because we tend to, to be creatures of habit. We want to do things the way we've always done them. Nowadays, you need very little printing. Yet, there are businesses whose sole reason for existence is printing. And they're wondering why they're declining in sales. And so they're saying, I need more money to buy better equipment so that I can compete. But that's not really the problem. The cheese has moved. You know, yeah. so I think recognizing in business what the real issue is, is the greatest challenge. Sometimes it's money, it's not always money. Mm. Money is the easiest excuse to give when you're not doing well. But the reality is money is normally just the, the problem in maybe 10 to 20% of the businesses. Mm -hmm. mm. What made you get to Lions then and the, how has been the experience? Okay, first, Lion's Den has been exciting. I mean, being a lion, sitting there as an investor, it's very exciting because, you know, I'm very passionate about entrepreneurship. I am so passionate about helping people grow their businesses. And so it gave me a platform where I could exercise my passion. I was really, I mean, I, I was alive. I was thri thriving in, in Lion's Den. Um, I was approached in the first season and I declined at that time because I felt at that time that the model that was being used wasn't correct. But by the time they come and approached me the second round, I actually said yes, because I realized in as much as it may not be perfect, it's the only thing that we have. And so we are better off doing what we can with what we have, as opposed to waiting for perfection. Yes, so I hadn't yes. bought my own theories in the first round and in the second round, I went back to my own theories and corrected myself and got on. I have really enjoyed being on Lion's Den if for no other reason, because it has given me the confidence and reassured me that entrepreneurship is alive and well in Kenya, that we have people who are doing great stuff. And it has also shown very glaringly the desperate need for mentorship and for a financial intervention tool that supports, supports young entrepreneurs to get what I would call patient capital. As you know, commercial debt is very expensive. Yeah, yeah. Most of this business cannot survive on commercial debt. So they need another, an angel financing, an investor of some kind, you know? But this is not readily available. The institutions to support, especially early stage and pre-revenue businesses are not very many. And so that's a niche that I believe that needs to be filled. And as I said earlier, my view is that if you are to create an intervention, it should not be at the bottom of the pyramid, the micro. It should be for those who have already taken the step up to become medium, 
because they have already shown they've got the grit, the resilience, and the discipline. Because I'm not saying that the others are not important, and there are so many. I'm just saying that if I have limited resources, let me put my resources where I have a higher chance of succeeding. Because if I give it to these guys in the middle level, they will create employment, and now they will mop up and pull up the guys who are in the small, and the small will pull up the guys in the micro. And that's where you create traction across. So for me, that's what I would say. So when I sit in Lounsden, the things I look out for in entrepreneurs are very simple. Number one is the, investor, the, the, the investee themselves. Mm -hmm. Are they coachable? Do they listen? Are they ready to learn? Or are they a know-it-all? Mm -hmm. Number two is their commitment. Is this their full-time job? How much time are they giving to this project? Or is it a side hustle? Because if it's a side hustle, and even me, I'm investing as a side hustle, then the business will collapse, <laughs> you yeah, know? Sure. So I need somebody who is 100% in. It is they are winning or they are winning. They are not taking half chances. Mm -hmm. That's what I need. And then finally, there's the actual business idea. How well it can be scaled up, and therefore, how much money it can make so that there's an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at those three factors, that's it. Mm -hmm. And in any business, even your own business, those are the same things you look at. That's true. Yeah. Finally, what has been your experience with the entrepreneurs that you have invested in? It has been a mixed bag uh, dealing with the entrepreneurs that I've invested in in uh, Lion's Den. Some of them are really exciting, so committed. They burn the midnight oil. They are an inspiration. Every time I think of them, I'm really excited. Mm. And then some major disappointment. Mm. They make you question your judgment that how did I get so wrong in picking somebody mm. who mm. only wanted was the money and then they run, yeah, <laughs> you know? Because yeah, yeah, there are yeah. some you give the money and after that you do not hear from them. So it's terrible to imagine that mm. somebody else more viable and more useful has lost the opportunity mm. because of a guy who all they wanted was quick money. So when I keep saying that financial management and a financial discipline is so critical, I cannot overemphasize that. Mm. Quick gains versus long-term success, it's the number one rule that I think every entrepreneur must embrace. Mm. Mm. Ah, thank you very much, John. Mm. It has been a pleasure. Asante sana. Thank mm. you. Yeah. Good.